This is bad. This is a badass motorcycle. There's no other way to say it, man. This thing is a death rocket and you shouldn't be allowed to have it, but we do have it. <laughs> What's up, Rito? Shade Tree Surgeon here, out near the villages with my man Joe. And no, that's not because we've chosen to come out and go swinging, as John Anderson would say. That's because Joe, as he always does, found one hell of a deal on old Facebook Marketplace. So here's to making motorcycle parts that don't exist yet, or have uh, ceased to be. You know you're skilled when, you're, uh, when your job here is ballast. <laughs> I've been training for this one my entire life. <laughs> A lot of cool stuff on the horizon, but I really wanna see if I can make this V65 Sabre run. Supposedly all it needs is exhaust and a radiator and it's ready to rock and roll. And even though I consider myself a reckless optimist with most things, when it comes to multi-cylinder motorcycles from Japan from the 80s and ready to go with just a few things, I, I try to have a little bit of guarded optimism there. So we'll see if we can make a noise, but I'm not holding my breath. The previous owner of this bike was trying to install four into one before he got a VMAX. I don't know if maybe he tried to install the four into one and then kind of figured out, I'm not gonna be able to do this and decided to give up. But let's see if we can do it. This is the four into one that he has. I can see where he made a little bit of a mistake here. It looks like he's tried to take off this rear exhaust. If you look up there, I showed it earlier, but Joe the Mountain Jedi thinks it's a Mac system, maybe a copy of a Del Kelvic, not really sure. The rear pipes actually use the stock pipes that come off the head. Look like he's removed everything and maybe he realized that like, oh, those are supposed to stay on there. I'm not really sure, but let's go ahead and reattach this exhaust that was unattached because this does use that. Only the front of this actually goes directly into the Honda head. Just like everything on any Honda V4 from the 80s, it's gonna be a little bit of a tight fit. And since he's already pulled it off, Let's go ahead and replace the exhaust gaskets too. He did give me extra ones that he had bought. Glad I have these things. They look like kind of like a copper crush, but inside them is some kind of silicone or plastic or something. So it crushes and expands. So these definitely look like single use. Let's see how hard this is gonna fight me. Something tells me it's probably gonna fight me pretty damn good. Okay, that's not gonna stay in there. I'll just use a little bit of red grease to make that stick. If I can find it, because everything is missing. I don't see why this red grease would hurt anything in here. You know, it'll just burn off. It might create a little bit of smoke for a minute. Of course, if I'm wrong, someone in the comments will definitely correct me pretty soon. But you'll be too late. Okay, luckily this doesn't look like it's gonna be too difficult. Let's not speak too soon though. Yeah, I doubt that these are gonna go on easy. It's all right though, I've dealt with worse. Definitely requires a little bit of dexterity skills to reach in backwards without looking, double backwards, full blind, finger spin over here. You know, as long as you're stocked up on cranberry juice, ladies, a mechanic will make your day. These fingers are used to probing all sorts of erstwhile locations. Ah! <sighs> Retrieval was possible. A little too fast on the nub in there. <laughs> Denied again. Whisper a couple sweet nothings in its ear first. Double fisting. Come on, I didn't know you are gonna be that kind of girl. All right, okay, cool. I don't wanna get this tight yet because we still gotta fit everything together, so I'm just gonna leave it fingering tight. And we did manage to get the exhaust pipe all the way out on this side. Hopefully it's not that hard to snake back in here. Worth noting that I almost put the wrong collar on there. There are two different collars, two that don't have a countersink for the rear exhaust and two that have a countersink for the front exhaust, so I'm glad I didn't mess that up. past the starter. All right, buddy, what do you want from me? What it really wants is this heat shield to not be in here. I don't know if that is possible. Maybe we can go in this way. Success! Off camera, I was getting a little frustrated. So the trick ended up being going in from the top, but I also had to disconnect the other side in order to move the heat shield around enough to get in there. So if you're working on one of these at home, that's how you do it. Now let's see if I can finagle this thing on. This is 
gonna take a while. All right, we got everything on. Now let's go through the slow procedure of tightening everything just a little bit at a time. So I don't freaking break something I don't want to. Last thing I want to do is bend the exhaust flange or freaking chip the exhaust port or something like that. So we're gonna be real careful right now. All right, boys, you know things are in dire straits when the old torch comes out. Oh. Really hoping this exhaust doesn't have to come off. <laughs> if you have a V65, you probably shouldn't put exhaust on it. Maybe there's a reason nobody makes these things for these things anymore. There are a few problems a bigger hammer won't solve, and if it can't solve them, it'll at least end them. Holy mackerel, dude. Cool, let's see if we got any leaks from anywhere. Well, we got oil. Let's hook up the battery and see if this thing will make a noise or not. If it is gonna make a noise, it's probably gonna be pretty loud. Well, I got no idea if this battery has a charge or not. Moment of truth, unless the battery has, <laughs> has no juice, then it's not really the moment of the truth, it's the moment of going to grab my battery pack. Let's see, we got a dash, we have a clock. Do we have a headlight? I do not see a headlight. Let's go grab the battery pack. Let's try this again with a little bit of persuasion. Just battery toast? It might be. I think this one might be a little too big to actually fit in here, but I guess we can make it work. We can at least strap it in. It's still kind of low, so I'm still going to have to use my jump pack. The other one, as soon as I tried to jump it, just freaking must have dropped a cell inside of it or something. That's what happens when they get old and they've gone dead a few too many times. Let's try this again. Can we get a brat? Okay, got that. Got a headlight. Got a good starter. We got this guy's on. This guy's on. All right, let's try a couple things. Let's try the old persuader. Oh, we got spark, that's for sure. I don't think we're getting fuel, but let's get that running again real quick and see if it starts pulling in enough for the carburetor to fill up. Yeah, we ain't getting fuel. That's just running off the other. We did get a brat though. That's cool. That's nice. It makes a noise. Okay, we're leaking fuel over here. Moving along the likely suspects. I put power to the fuel pump and we've got power coming from the fuel pump, but even though I ran it, I still didn't have any fuel in the car. Well, nothing will stop you in your tracks like a dead battery. It's the next day and I would run the battery down so low and then I ran my jump pack down so low and I figured, you know what? It's time to call it quits. I think I've got this figured out. Of course, with the help of Joe, the Mountain Jedi. The fact that it would run on ether means we got good spark. The bike was running on ether, of course. We just weren't filling up the fuel bowls. Literally, it just came down to a bad connection. Joe wiggled some wires around, chased it back down to the box that controls when the fuel pump comes on. These are complicated bikes. That's why I want to learn them. There's also a few redundancies in how the fuel gets to the fuel pump, which I'm going to eliminate here in a minute. But regardless, it's very hard to diagnose anything unless you have a fully charged battery when it comes to a motorcycle, a car, or anything like that. Decided to call it quits, leave the battery on the charger overnight. It's the next morning. Let's see if we can get some braps out of this whole thing. 
So with this tank, we've got a pet cock here on the tank itself and a pet cock here right before the fuel filter. I don't understand why we need two. So I'm just gonna take this line that goes into the second pet cock, which is not even really readily accessible. It's behind a panel, you can't really get to it. And I'm just gonna wire this when I'll eventually put an inline fuel filter on it directly into the pump. Because this pet cock leaks like a sieve. This one's leaking a little bit too, but we'll deal with that later. I just wanna see if we can get this thing to run. All right, I'm gonna get some hose clamps on that here in a second, but let's just see if we can get this sucker to run. Oh, that's a good sign. Fucker won't settle down. Well, cool. I'll call that one a win for right now. Go ahead and name this lift Sisyphus. Sisyphus the lift. I ain't bitching too hard. I'm lucky to have a lift. Well, this doesn't seem to attach to anything here. So I'm gonna have to make a mount. Not a big deal. Well, this is why you don't throw bolts away. I believe I have a solution. Oh, well, I guess this isn't a bolt. This is just scrap metal, but you know what I mean. Even though this is a rigid mounted motor, just to make myself feel better, I'm gonna use a polyurethane spacer. Well, I know there's gonna be a fair few people who would have said, leave that damn exhaust pipe off of there. David from Forgotten Angels being one of them, but let's go ahead and see what this thing sounds like with a silencer on, because I hope it still sounds good, obviously, and it sounded awesome before. But I'll say this, you guys will not be able to tell how ear piercingly loud and open exhaust on this 1100cc V4 was through the computer screen. It would have been unbearable on the road. <laughs> Don't have a clamp that's gonna work for right here, so substantial exhaust leak, but we'll get something eventually for that. It starts, it idles, it braps, it sounds good. Uh, let's go ahead and see if anything else works on this bike. We know it probably goes, but does it stop? Does it shift? These are still unknowns. The V65, the Sabre. Pretty stoked to have a Magna. Like I said, having the pair of these things for less than $2,500 is pretty amazing. Well, let's save that pretty amazing to see how it actually runs on the street because even though the carburetors are rebuilt, I don't know if they're jetted for this four into one pipe. So it might fall over its face once I get it out there, even though it's idling. That sucker fires right up though. <laughs> This was the baddest thing you could get back in the day. Are we just gonna sound good and idle or can we actually ride too? It looks like maybe, if I get out on the street, let's uh, let's test some brakes here. Looks like we got brakes, okay. That's always a good sign. All right, we do have a temperature gauge. I'm not gonna take it out for long because he said it needed a new radiator. So I have to assume that it's probably gonna overheat. But come on, I can't put this thing together and not go for a rip. I'll say right off the get-go, baby, that feels just fine. Oh, this feels good, man. It feels good to put it together and have it run right away, man. I'm still working on the Magna. Like I said, I got that stupid little crossover tube I got to do, but having this thing ready to go, besides a possible overheating issue, keep an eye on that not get too far away here. I don't want to be able to make it back without overheating, but being able to just jump on this thing and, oh yeah, dude, it runs right away. It goes, it stops. I have a uh, few complaints with that. That's for damn sure. Woo! Bam! 
baby. <laughs> Dude, this thing is a suicide machine. I can't imagine just selling this to some fresh faced kid in 1984, setting him out on the street. The only thing he's had experience with before, like a Harley Davidson or something, you put him on this thing. Dude, it's all over. This thing is out of pocket. I'm gonna be kind of careful in the turns because I don't know about these tires either. And this thing will get you out of shape with a quickness. I feel like the V65 Sabre and Magna were like a very much like a belated revenge <laughs> for, for, the, for World War II. You know, yeah, we might have dropped the bombs over there, but uh, I think Japan went ahead and got its revenge on America anyway. And it was with these bikes, dude, because the ones that ain't moldering away in someone's garage definitely ended up wrapped around a telephone pole, baby. This was way too much power for the early 80s. There wasn't a bike in the world that was doing this. There may be a bike or two, but not one that was this readily available. Oh, I can't wait to put the fairing on this thing too. This is such a badass bike, man. This is so like retro futuristic. Six gears, a six speed transmission back in the early 80s. All of this tech on here, which is kind of a pain in the butt for this bike now. It's really why people are so scared of them. But God, I hate seeing these bikes in junkyards, man. Everybody ends up selling them. Or, you know, their drunk Uncle Ronnie had one in the 80s and he parked it in the garage and the carbs got messed up and just nobody even messes with it because you take the seat off these things and you start looking at what's underneath the proverbial hood. And if you've only ever worked on regular bikes and not one of these kind of like high-tech 1980s motorcycles what's underneath the hood on these will really scare you there's a lot of proprietary tech there's a lot of stuff that was just on these bikes and no other motorcycles and like I said it can really turn people off of them because not to mention that Damn, dude, this thing is fun. But yeah, it can turn people off of them because they get scared. They don't know what they're doing. And there's so much wiring under here and so many electronics. Now, it's not a big deal if you know it. If you know what's going on under there, you can fix them. And they had these camshaft issues also fixable. They only made this motorcycle for two years and so much of the stuff on it was just for this bike. There's even stuff that's different on this motorcycle than the Magna. I'll do a video on that later. But just, I hate seeing these things go to the scrap. Yard. I hate seeing them sit. And so I want to learn them. Joe knows the V65 from snooter to pooter, all right? From nose to shitter. He is very familiar with these motorcycles. He knows all their quirks, all their eccentricities, and I'm just, I'm going to learn it too because I hate seeing these things go away. They're awesome bikes. People should be riding them still. They should be on the road. They should be kept around. They should be fixed. They should be made to go because let me tell you what, if you, you fix the camshaft issue, which is, he tells me is easily fixable, we'll do that in a different video. And you you know how the electronics on it works and he can even repair he can re-solder a lot of the electronics in this so even if your cdi boxes go bad and they're because they're not potted they're not potted boxes so he can actually take those apart and fix them we're on a two-man mission to save the v65s these are a rare breed too weird to live too rare to die and i don't want to see him hit the scrap yard because these things are an absolute menace and i want to see him out there just doing bad things for years to come we're on it, baby. The V65, we're not going to let him die. The V65 will live on in infamy if we have to do it just me and him by ourselves, okay? One V65 at a time, we're making the American roads a more dangerous place. This bitch is bad. This is a badass motorcycle. There's no other way to say it, man. This thing is a death rocket, and you shouldn't be allowed to have it, but we do have it. I'm not normally one to harp on throwaway culture. When it's time to throw something away, I say throw it away, but these bikes don't deserve to be thrown away, man. They're just amazing technology. They were not just amazing for the time that they came out, but they're pretty amazing right now. This is still an incredibly fast motorcycle. I mean, you got 120 plus horsepower on this thing, a six speed transmission. Like this is still badass in 2024, let alone 1984. This is a 40 year old motorcycle that'll smoke most things that come off the showroom floor today. Not everything. There's a lot of fast bikes out there. Don't get me wrong but but this will still smoke a fair majority of the motorcycles you can leave with brand new today now does it stop as good does it handle as good does it do any of those things well that's a different story all right but uh, when it comes to going fast in a straight line it does it well. But that's enough about the V65, me and Joe the Mountain Jedi's personal mission to make sure that they're out there making the world a more dangerous place. Let's talk about a bike for a different job that's 
the same vintage. Hard to believe that this 1982 Tour Glide and that Honda V65 were occupying a showroom floor at pretty much the same time. While this old shovel head might not be able to keep up with the V65, that's not what it's for. This thing ain't for going fast, it's for going far. Going far on a vintage machine, going far on something that somebody would have chopped up, you know, made a chopper out of. Not that I have anything against choppers, but this bike was built for a specific purpose and it still does it well today. And I think it should be used for such. There's plenty of other bikes that are just bikes. They're, all, they're old shovel heads. There's plenty of, you know, chopper projects. There's plenty of old stuff that you can take and you can make your chopper out of. This thing has everything it came with. It's got the fairings, it's got the bags, everything works. It's ready to do its job, which is like I said, go far. And the beige malaise, it is gonna make somebody an awesome bike because this 82 shovel head, this could be your 82 shovel head. We've only got a few days left for you to grab a raffle ticket. 100% of those proceeds go to benefit Forgotten Angels in their fight to end the cycle of abuse in the foster care system. They take young men and women who have been made homeless, are in danger of dying, becoming drug addicts, in danger of being tra human trafficked. Uh, they come from horrible situations where they've never been given a chance. They've never been chance one, let alone a chance to fail. They take those kids and they turn them into productive members of society. They take those young boys and they turn them into men because even though the government says they're men at 18, you guys out there, you tell me if you were a man at 18 and I'm sure some of you were and some of you went through the school of hard knocks. I get that, but these kids are not being given a chance. They're being thrown to the wolves and it's not fair and nobody's doing anything about it except for us. Every single dollar, me and Shaylee C paid to have this thing fixed up. So every single dollar of a raffle ticket that gets bought for this is going directly to Forgotten Angels. It doesn't hit any trees on the way down. It's going to help these kids become productive members of society instead of letting them slip through the cracks, be forgotten and have nobody care about them. When the entire rest of the world doesn't care about these young men and women, when they don't care, somebody's got to, and that somebody's us. And I thank each and every one of you who've joined us on this mission and have bought raffle tickets and supported Forgotten Angels and come to the camp out. If you buy $100 worth of raffle tickets, that gets you into the camp out for free. Just keep your receipt, your emailed receipt. And in a few days, uh, this shovel head's gonna have a new owner. So you better get on it if you wanna get in it, okay? There's actually really good odds. Odds are crazy. I'll put them on the screen right now because I have to count up how many tickets have been sold. But the odds are actually really, really good right now. So jump on this thing if you want it. Worst case scenario, if you don't want it, it's probably worth about eight or $9,000 as it sits. So worst case scenario, you could sell it and have a nice payday, even if you don't want the motorcycle. So that link's down below. Sometimes good things happen to bad people because we are bad people doing good things, but sometimes just doing the good things enough. Till next time, y'all, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. They never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.